hasn't really been much going on this week, but it's more so a lot for me going on this weekend. I have a special guest with me on this week's vlog, so I'm going to introduce you to him in a little bit. But right now, oh well, yeah, I forgot to tell you guys, I'm also a radio personality in my area. I host a show called The Gospel Express. It's all mine. Um, it airs every Sunday from 6 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. So you guys, this is Doc Christian. He's the one that got me involved in media and he gave me my first break, which is still my break. <laughs> but this is my co-host, Doc Christian. So now that you guys know a little bit of insight about Doc Christian, my co-host, there is something interesting. It's time for us to get into how we met. It's actually a really funny story. His wife is an extreme couponer, and my mom is an extreme couponer. And I used to live on campus when I was a freshman in college. Now I'm a senior, but when I was a freshman in college, I lived on campus. So when I moved back home, my mom and his wife was actually couponing. They were about to go coupon. So I met his wife, and she asked, what was I interested in? And I was like, well, I want to be a radio personality or just the all-around media personality whether it's TV or radio so she goes you know my husband is Doc Christian right he hosts his own gospel show and he also hosts a lot of events and he meets a lot of gospel celebrities and just celebrities in general and he worked a lot of media so I'm like okay wonderful so the funny thing about that is like maybe the day after Christmas of 2014 I met Doc and he was just telling me about the industry and things like that and then the next day, he it's so funny, the next day he invited me to come to the station at 6 in the morning on Sunday. So I'm just thinking, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go visit and see what the radio station looked like. But for whatever reason, something told me to bring my Beats, my headphones. So I bring my headphones in and we're in the station at 6 in the morning. So Doc says... Put your headsets on, we're about to go on air. And I was like, what? <laughs> and it took me like, I want to say three weeks for me to realize that I actually was on air. For my parents, they realized sooner, but for me, it was really shocking. And it's funny that this December would be about, what, three years since I've been on this radio station. So it's really cool. So in a second, when we're done with this break for our show, I'm going to talk to him about that and why he chose me to be his radio co-host. Alright, Doc, I just told everyone about how we met through couponing and my mom and your wife. So what I want you to tell the viewers is why you chose me to be your co-host on the Gospel Express. Uh, well, part of it is simple. Uh, I just like the way you spoke. Um, and something else, you had extreme manners. You had a lot of manners, <laughs> which is something you don't often see in today's time. But... Uh, I, I enjoyed the way you spoke, some of the things you said. You had a sort of a little childlike innocence, mm -hmm. and uh, you seemed eager uh, to want to communicate with people. So those are some of the things that drew me in. Okay. How important is it for young folks who want to break into the industry to be eager and show eagerness? So people like you who are in the position to help them. Well, uh, there's a thin line between ego and being, you know, like really stupid crazy and, and being eager, honestly. Uh -huh. uh, but people want to know that you want it uh, because it is a lot of work. Right. Um, so you want to recognize and see someone who's willing to put the work in. This is not easy. It's a lot of work. Um, and once people find out, many back out. It's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. so. Only the strong survive. Oh, yeah. So, Doc, we've been on air for about two or three years. You taught me everything I know about radio, how to run the board, and how to basically run my show. Is there anything that I've taught you? Uh, yeah, and I'm learning every day. And that is the mind of a millennial. Um, how you guys think, um, what is important to you, uh -huh. uh, what your priorities are, how you put the blocks in order versus how I would do it. So yeah, I'm learning every day. And since I've been in the game for a while now, I've learned that you've got to stay up and you're never comfortable. You have to keep learning. You think like, wow, you know, what do I need to know now? Mm -hmm. You never stop learning. So yeah, I learn from you every day. Today is May the 6th, 
2017 and it's actually a pretty big day for myself because today is the day that I'm rededicating my life to Christ. I'm getting baptized today. I'm dressed strictly all in white for my baptism and I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Asia Mitchell Tab, in obedience to the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ, and on the profession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As you guys can see, the shower cap really didn't help when it came to me being baptized, so that's cool. But, um, okay, back to why I decided to rededicate my life to God. Well, simply because... You, as I mentioned earlier in the vlog, that I am a gospel radio personality. And like I said, the opportunity just came, so I took it. But it was kind of something that I want to say in so many ways I wasn't ready for or that I had no idea what was going on. Like, I knew about religion. I've been to church before, obviously. I used to go... To church you know with my family some Sundays out the year obviously most of the time on Easter Sunday so but I really didn't know much about the stories in the Bible or anything about faith and religion really other than the stuff that they teach you in school but you know that really doesn't do anything so the interesting thing is that over time with me being gospel radio I go to a lot of gospel concerts and the funny thing, well, it's really not funny, but the most interesting thing is, is that I could go to these concerts, and I like, I love the ministry in music, like, um, Kirk Franklin, Dietrich Haddon, James Fortune, Tasha Page Lockhart, she's actually my favorite gospel singer, The Walls Group, Travis Green, the list goes on, but even though like I was enjoying like the music side and the media side to ministry honestly I felt nothing and it's a really hard concept to understand because it's not like I was going to church I mean don't get me wrong like I always believed that there was a God I just wasn't I guess accepting to that point and that's only because when Okay, so like I said, I went to church with my family some Sundays out the year, but I would always go on Easter. Well, when I was a freshman in college, I lived on campus, so my parents at the time decided that they were going to get baptized. So I, again, was living the college girl freshman life, obviously. I'm not going to go into detail if you know what, you know most college students do as freshmen so I was basically having a lot of fun having the time of my life and my parents were going through their process of rededicating their life to God and then, then when I came home I was just more so like okay this is different but I still wasn't ready I felt like to accept Christ into my life and it's like it's something that they didn't force upon me and honestly I could I couldn't thank them enough for doing that because I wouldn't have understood and I probably would have been way more rebellious about it than accepting to it they allowed me to make that decision on my own and I think that's very important and also they didn't really condemn me for wanting to wait now they always said that if I wanted to you know dedicate my life to God and get baptized they'll be there with me every step of the way and they'll support me but they were just saying that the decision is mine they couldn't grab me take me to the church and force me to get baptized and rededicate my life to God so I really appreciate them for that but like I said like I would go and this was all before you know I got baptized I would go to these events and things like that and I wouldn't feel anything but I like the music so it's just like over time I was in so many ways kind of rebellious against my own station it was more so like I was excited that I was getting an opportunity to be on air, to interview all of these gospel people, and um, gospel people meaning like Dr. Bobby Jones, Ty Trivet, Kirk Franklin, all these people, but deep within me, I was kind of like, well, this isn't the path that I really wanted to take. This isn't the path that I saw myself being, because as a child, I always thought that 
I would be on TRL or 106 in Park or something. Anyone that knows me knows that Lala Anthony, when she was on TRL, ever since I saw her up there, I always wanted to be what they used to call a DJ, but I like the term media personality. So, um, obviously there's no 106 in Park and there's no TRL now, so... It was just more so like I had just went with this and I started in radio. I always wanted to start my career in radio because I, when, okay, people that I looked up to like Lala, Roxy Diaz from 106 in Park and Wendy Williams, what did they all do? They started in radio. So I, I was like, okay, I need to start in radio before I get into television. But over time with the whole working in gospel radio I would go to all of these churches, I would go talk to all these kids, all these empowerment workshops when I worked in the industry, and I had learned that there's some things that are bigger than just being on the radio. I learned that there was things that were just bigger than meeting and interviewing all these famous people, that there's like a message in all of these events, and it's just over time I had just felt that it wasn't right in my heart to be going to all these events and you know not accepting God into my life and over you know what actually I went not too long ago to see Joyce Myers with one of my friends on campus and she was saying that um what did she say she said that for those of you who work in ministry obviously myself that you shouldn't just believe that what you're doing like when you're working in ministry obviously I'm just going to throw like my radio duties or my um you know like my event hosting duties at these gospel events and concerts that that's enough like no you need to work on your personal relationship and your personal um your personal relationship and your personal commitment with God because that's just as that's more important and I felt like she was speaking to me because at times sometimes I felt like like I felt like what I was doing was enough and then other times like my conscience and within my heart I knew that what I was doing inside it wasn't enough I learned through this whole journey through radio and being a college student and seeing my life change seeing myself mature and like going through this process of wanting to dedicate my life to God what favor ain't fair means I learned that even though I'm on a gospel station and I host gospel events and I go talk to children that doesn't mean I'm worthy either and over time it's just like I had just felt like this decision was right so it was like it was the weekend of Easter it wasn't Sunday it was Friday I went to my church and my mom introduced me to the pastor of my church and the first lady and she and um they asked you know how I was and things like that so I just told them immediately that I wanted to get baptized as soon as possible and they were like okay well we need you to fill out this information and we'll get back to you as soon as possible so earlier this week I got my letter in the mail and I just made it official today. So I'm really excited to see where this journey kind of takes me. I feel better trying to live for God and not for just my selfish reasons and my selfish sins because <laughs> trust and believe that happened a lot within my life. So it's just more so that's why I wanted to rededicate my life to God because I wanted to mend my personal relationship with him like he's already laid the foundation within my life and I just you know want to live through him I want to go through his path and take me where he wants me to go not so much as what I want to do so that's why I rededicated my life to Christ and for those of you if you want to actually ask me questions in my comment section be sure to or if you want to send me a message on my website that's actually www.asiasimone.com and I'll answer them or I'll actually put them on my next blog but I hope you enjoyed this blog and I am signing off for this week.